Hi friends, welcome back to our tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series. And in today's episode, we are going to learn about how to add validations in our template driven forms. If you remember, if you're continuing from the previous episode, we learned how to build template driven forms. We have put together a form. We learned how to use different form fields like text, drop down, select, text area, checkbox, radio, etc. Today we are going to extend that and add validations to it in the template uh, driven forms. So if you have not uh, checked out the previous episode, please do so, so that you have the continuity and context. Welcome back. My name is Sridhar. I have over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer and I'm here to share my knowledge with you all. I'm also here to learn from you all. So during the course of this tutorial series, if you have any doubts, any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I will be happy to help you. I'm putting in a lot of hard work in compiling these tutorials and questions for you. So please support me by subscribing and liking the videos. Thank you in advance. A lot of you have requested me to create a full playlist where I cover from introduction to advanced. So right now the playlist is live. I have created it. The description can be found in the, dis in the description box. Please do check that playlist so that you don't miss out on Angular 9 tutorials. So we are continuing to learn Angular fo forms uh, from past few episodes. Uh, we learned about how to install Bootstrap. We have learned about basic forms. We have also created a template driven form in the previous episode. And today we are going to add validations in the template driven forms. Let's get started. So validations, what are validations? Validations are extremely important and integral part of any forms. So this allows user to restrict or prevent from entering unwanted or junk data. It's important that we set some rules which user will follow while using the application. A common set of validators that are used are minimum length, maximum length, required, email, etc. Remember that Angular internally maintains the state information for forms at all times. So when we change some values in the form, Angular knows that if the form values or the field values have been changed, touched, they are valid, invalid, etc. So let's see that first in action of the form object and then we will start adding validations. Let's get started. So I'm using uh, the same um, I would say the component that we built in the last episode. So if you see, we built sign in component, which had some basic fields. Um, you can add any fields that you want. We added few fields. Um, so let's see that now. So right now I will go to console, clear it. I will enter some values and say password and then select terms and conditions, select the gender and add some notes. Okay, now I submit, I will see the form, ng form that is submitted, the entire thing. We can see it has different states like invalid, dirty, pristine, touched, valid, true, etc. We can also see the form is submitted is true and the form has some details like values and value changes, status change, right? So it has all of these details. Now, if you see, let me again clear the console and bring it down here and let me not enter anything, right? If I don't enter anything and I click submit, it will still submit and the values will be empty. You see the values are empty here, but we don't want that, right? We want user to enter values, then only he should be able to submit the form or in other case, it's called as highlighting the user saying that some fields are required, some patterns are not matching or some data is mandatory, etc. So basically it's kind of a error handling in the UI, right? So let's learn that. So that is where validations comes into picture. So let's extend this now. So we learned in the last episode that template driven forms are mostly HTML5 driven, right? So which means I can just add the attributes here and I can say required, right? So when we say required, it will tell me that it's required form, right? 
its required field but it doesn't do anything because it's empty but what I want is all of these fields we can say required right and the way we disable is three thing three ways one we can highlight the errors right we can say that when there is an error highlight the input box with some red color or something and say that if there is an error the other way is disabling the submit button itself do not allow user to proceed if there is an error in the form third is show custom messages like what has gone wrong so let's see all of these three um, uh, experiences in our code so first thing I'm going to go to my component CSS and here I'm going to write whenever there is a ND ng touched ng invalid that means find an input element whenever the class is ng touched and ng invalid put the border color as red so this way we can highlight the error so now you see I touched it I stepped out it became red right but it doesn't happen here right see this it won't happen because it is not required this was touched and it is invalid right it was touched and it is invalid that's why the border became red this is one way of handling which is through class right which is to CSS class now I can say that this is error doubt let me show you in the code when you inspect this element angular would have in angular would have see here it added the classes ng invalid ng touched that's why this is red color and we have added this CSS here if I remove this nothing happens right so whenever you touch and it's invalid angular will insert ng invalid and ng touched using that we are highlighting there is a error but there can be a better way of handling it which is disabling the submit button right now the submit button is enabled we will disable it we will write disabled attribute equal to not the form name is sign in form so take the form name dot valid that means if the form is not valid disable it so now you see it is disabled it won't allow me to click till I enter all the required fields now see it got enabled now I'll delete it it got disabled see the behavior right so this is second way which is this is the second way which is disabling the submit button itself using ng form dot valid so here I'm checking if the form is not valid just disable the submit button so you see this is disabled I and what is the error this is the error now I enter it's enabled right similarly you can give for different attributes now there is one more way which is for a better experience to show custom field validations for example I want to show a message when let's say I'll use this small and here I will use this element I will delete this here and here we will say ng if equal to here I'm saying check for the uh, field name the field name here is email address field so now we will say field dot touched and field name dot is not valid if the value is touched and if it is invalid show the error message so it says okay uh, it says the sign in component okay property email address does not exist okay so let's fix that first why that is okay so the value name uh, is ng model required okay so now for this we will have to do a two-way binding like for example what I have done here so we just do a two-way value binding in sense we will take it as an ng model in the template now let me define that here so since we need to now do two-way data binding we will take the same name put it here in a template variable 
and say bind it to ng model right so that's how we will do two way data binding so now you see i touched i stepped out right so here i will say enter email address so remember you if you want to use custom field validation we need to define the template variable with the name as ng model which is basically we are doing a data binding here with the template variable by the name email address field take the same name and put the condition dot touched and is not valid show the error message so now you see it won't show you message i touched it i stepped out now it says enter email address right so this is a third way where we can use different field combination similarly we can define the same for any other uh, field that we want just copy it for this again i want to add here it is password field add password field and again copy so this is the simplest form uh, that how you can start using it so here copy this password field password field dot valid and again touched now you would again see i touched so now it says enter password so this is how you can handle validations in the uh, in the code itself in the template itself now let me give you one more example now here i am saying that this is required field and now i am also saying this is type email right this is type email right so let's see now it says correct valid because this is not a valid email address now i'm saying correct email address so now i will not see that but if i remove it it says enter email address right because it is input type equal to email right so that's why let's it, let it reload now i enter it takes it now i remove it again bring it back the email now it says enter correct email address right so this is how you can do various types with email with number with type so remember three important things in this one we have to use template binding of the same name and bind it with ng model then we can add the html validations like if it is email but it is number we have to mention whether it is required all of that we can capture it in the custom field validations right so as an example i want you to extend the other uh, input fields that you, we have used let's say disable the form if the user has not entered the terms and conditions right if he has not checked this terms and conditions disable the form the logic is same just make it required and it should work for you like for example i'll just show you try this out so see now i will enter correct values but my form will still be disabled because i have to select terms and conditions if i don't it would get disabled right so try out for radio button checkbox and other fields to learn it in the next uh, tutorial i'll cover reactive forms so that's an important piece um, sorry by mistake i wrote here form validation but in the next tutorial i'll be covering about uh, the reactive forms and we will take it from there if you have not yet subscribed please do so for my channel also give a thumbs up to this video thank you so much see you in the next episode